Welcome to Following, a weekly podcast where we will discuss how to follow Jesus. Christianity is not an event you attend, it's a life you live. Join us each week as we dive into the intersection of real life circumstances and the life changing Word of God. Come, follow Jesus with us. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3, 21. All right, welcome back to following. Uh, Here, as always, looking at God's word and asking what are we supposed to do in light of it. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting passage, Phil. Why why does baptism save you? Is that what, is that what you said? I, I, that's what the text says. Corresponding oh, okay. Okay. to that, baptism now saves you. Okay. Yeah. So, so yesterday at Macon FBC was Communion Day, uh, and so on that day is when we typically baptize people. Mm-hmm. We celebrate communion, uh, and we have family meeting to discuss membership and things of that nature. So, um, usually the sermon on those days tends to lean more into an explanation and exaltation of the Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this week, we, we really wanted to emphasize baptism. And so we, we shifted the, the bulk of the service to surround baptism and explain baptism. And so that's why I chose this text, because it's a very clear mm-hmm. statement on baptism. Yeah. But it's also a very confusing statement on baptism. Depending I mean, what, on how much of the verse you read. <laughs> yeah. If you stop with baptism now saves you, you, you have a problem. Yeah. Um, b- because baptism does save, but not in the way that a lot of people think. You know, right. there, there are some denominations who think that you're not actually a Christian until you've been immersed in water, mm-hmm. and that if you died, you would go to hell if you were not immersed in water. And it, that's not what this text is saying. In fact, he, he explicitly says, that's not what I mean. Mm-hmm. When you look at the text, he says, baptism now saves you. And then he has this caveat, this explanation, not the removal of dirt from the flesh. I'm not talking about a physical washing here. That's not the baptism I'm referring to, but rather the baptism I'm referring to is an appeal to God for a good conscience. So this is the, the baptism that saves is the appeal to God for a good conscience, which I think is saving faith. Yeah. Because when you go into the book of Acts, baptism, repentance, and faith, they seem to be interchangeable with mm-hmm. the same experience of the heart. There's a turning away from sin, a turning away from wickedness, a turning away from selfishness, and a turning to God and a reliance upon God. And that, that internal working of the heart, that internal trust and confidence in God manifests itself visibly in the act of baptism. Mm-hmm. So baptism then becomes this public profession of faith. It is your public declaration of allegiance to Jesus. It's your public demonstration of your confidence in Jesus mm-hmm. to save you from your sins. So baptism that saves you is the, 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 the saving faith through which the grace of God comes into your life. Yeah, and part of that fleshing out is being immersed in water. Like that's, that's exactly right. You, that's, that's the next step in, in uh, like, like once, once you do place your faith in, in Christ, the next thing you do is be baptized. We that's see right. that pretty clearly. That's in, exactly right. And in in what you see in the book of Acts is that baptism follows mm-hmm. this, this, this faith in Christ. Yeah. Or it's, it's the expression of this faith in Christ. So it's not something that an infant does. It's something that a believer does. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I would, I would help the listener. I would urge the listener to really take a moment and think, have you trusted in Christ? Are you trusting in Christ? Mm-hmm. And if you are, have you, have you publicly displayed that trust through the act of baptism? If not, you're living in disobedience to Jesus. Yeah. And if you refuse to be baptized, mm-hmm. I, would, I would wonder if you're actually trusting Jesus or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. I've, is, so we, we uh, I mean, obviously we're, we're in the camp that, that says baptism does not, is not an act that, that saves you. Like in the sense of being immersed, that's yeah, the, 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 the act of sal- uh, The act of physical immersion yeah, yeah. is not salvific. Right, right. But, but it is the expression of faith mm-hmm. by which we are saved. Yeah, and, and there's two ditches you can fall into on, on this right. issue. You can fall into uh, the ditch that says that the actual immersion of 
of the body into the water or sprinkling, whatever, uh, is what actually saves you. Or that's, that's part of what saves you a step in this salvific mm-hmm. part. Uh, and, and that's, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's what Peter's saying here. And then the other ditch is, well, baptism isn't important. And, right. and that's kind of what we see a lot in our camp. That's right. Uh, we're Baptists, and, and a lot in our camp will downplay mm-hmm. the role of bap- baptism because right. they're pushing against the right. higher view of, of baptism that right. uh, higher churches have. That's like, right. like Catholicism. And so uh, we have to figure out what, what is the road that we want to walk on so we don't fall into these ditches. Mm-hmm. And so with, with that being said, what is baptism? What is it for? Why did Christ institute it as an ordinance in, in the life of the believer? Well, when you first see it in uh, John the Baptist, when he comes proclaiming repentance, mm-hmm. and how do people express their repentance? Yeah, baptism. By submitting to baptism. In a river, by the way. Yeah. So, it, and, and this was not a foreign concept to the Jewish people at that mm-hmm. time. They had what was called a mikvah, which was a bath that, that you know people would immerse themselves in, cleanse themselves before going into the temple. Uh, but if, but, uh, but baptism in the sense of uh, what we're talking about was typically something that a Gentile would do if he was converting to Judaism or mm-hmm. something like that. So you would be circumcised, you'd also be baptized. So this is not something that the Jewish people kind of saw as something that they needed to experience. And so I think that's why John's message was so revolutionary. Mm. But what it is, is a declaration, I am turning from an old way of life to a new way of life. I am preparing my heart to, to meet the king. So then Jesus comes, and Jesus and his followers baptize as well. And it's the same message of the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the good news. So baptism in the New Testament is always associated with repentance and faith. Mm-hmm. When you get into the book of Acts, they are doing what Jesus commanded. He said, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded. And so what, what they're doing is they're bringing people to this moment of repentance and faith where they realize they need a Savior. Mm-hmm. They need Christ. They can't be saved in any other way but, but by Christ. And so they, they submit to the act of baptism, trusting in Christ, confident that God will keep his word and save them through Jesus Christ. And their faith and their repentance is visibly demonstrated in the act of baptism. And so baptism becomes the initiation into the kingdom of God mm. in, in that regard. So um, as, a, as a person, when you realize you are lost and in need of a Savior, and, you, and your heart begins to, to lean towards God, and you begin to turn from sin, and you begin to trust in Jesus, you need to be baptized. Because baptism is the first command of the of the new life in Christ, the old you is died, and mm-hmm. we bury it in the water of baptism. Yeah. And like Christ was raised from the dead, the new you rises a, 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 to live in the newness of mm-hmm. Christ. So baptism is very very important in the life of the church. Uh, it is the expression and display and demonstration of our faith in mm-hmm. Jesus. And just refusing to be baptized because you don't want to get your hair wet or because you're afraid of water, I don't think is legitimate. I, and, and I don't think sprinkling is legitimate either. I think there needs yeah. to be immersion. Mm-hmm. Because, because that's, that's what, what baptized means. The word means to, be immersed. to immerse or dip. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's, that's what the word means. Baptize yeah. is simply the English way of saying baptizo, which is mm-hmm. the Greek word, which means to immerse. Yeah. So, um, so wait, the, you, you mean to tell me that the, the COVID squirt guns weren't it's not. It's not how we should be baptizing people. No. Did you see that? Those pictures. I did not There's see like that. like priests like uh, squirting babies with water guns. <laughs> no. For I did not see that. I did not see. Six that. feet away, of course. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? Baptism. Yeah, okay. Um. So so. Uh. Yeah. It's it's not only just like a, well I don't want to get wet or or even uh well I'm afraid to do this in front of a bunch of people like. Um, like this, this fear of, of going on, oftentimes it's on a stage in front of the, the entire church, I think is what it should be, but, and then being baptized in front of the, the entire church, uh, like, I don't think that's the only reason why people don't be, or, you know, aren't baptized or refuse baptism. It's also this theological, uh, well, we don't need baptism. Like, think about the thief on the cross. He wasn't mm-hmm. baptized. So, you know, we, yeah, it's you not, shouldn't it's not build your theology around an exception. Right. Yeah. You should build it around There's the, the rule. rule. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
the the general pattern is like the the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts mm-hmm. eight, I believe it is, where he's he comes to faith in Jesus as he's reading the scriptures and Philip explains the scriptures to him and he says, Hey, look, there's water. What's preventing me mm-hmm. from being baptized? Because he's, he's trusting in Christ. So um, when you trust Christ, you you must be baptized. Mm-hmm. And um, when you are baptized, you are attached and adopted into the family of God in that local church. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think baptism is, is really important. I think some people... It, Baptism has almost become kind of um, like this, um, like, I'm trying to think of the right, it's like a an age, you know, you pass through these certain activities of life, you know, mm. and you just, you, you got to get baptized, but there doesn't seem to be that real spiritual component to it, and I, th- I think that's wrong. Mm. You know, you, you a parent can't decide for their child, it's time for them to be baptized, and you know, as your child is starting to ask questions about the Lord, that doesn't mean you immediately put them in the water because you don't want to confuse the child that this act is saving them. You want mm-hmm. them to know that Jesus is saving them, that the act is simply a visible expression of their trust in Jesus. Uh, and I think sometimes as Baptists, we baptize children too early because they don't quite understand. It doesn't mean they're not necessarily saved, mm-hmm. but we don't want to confuse them. And yeah. We want to help them understand the gospel uh, and so I think it's sometimes best if we wait a little bit so that, you know, we say we don't baptize infants, but sometimes we baptize not long after in, in, infancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> infant-minded. Yeah, and so I think we have to be very, very careful with that. Um, That's th- that, that, again, is, is one ditch that you can fall, of, fall into of the two. Like, the other ditch is, uh, well, the, well, you can either uh, put off in fear of confusing mm-hmm. um, which, which there is some, some legit, legitimate to see, you know, to say like, yeah. well, let's keep discussing this more and yeah. and yeah. wait and until they they can really understand. Yeah. Uh, but then the the other ditch is, uh, I think, to, um, like my 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 personal uh, testimony is, uh, you know, I was I was baptized fairly young. I think it was like eight or nine. Um, and looking back, you know, I, I don't know if I had the full grasp of what exactly was taking place, but as my, my theology and understanding of, of Christ's atoning work on the cross grew and developed, uh, that baptism is something that I can look back to and, and remember. And, uh, you know, that's something that, um, like in, in some of the, the catechisms, um, is you, the parents would encourage their, their kids to remember your baptism. Remember, mm-hmm. remember back to when you were baptized, you were yeah. buried with christ and then and, and it's not talking about just the 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 water in the tub it's talking about that whole uh interchangeable baptism save saving faith all, all these things and, yeah and so anyway the, the, i think the other ditch is is um well you didn't have a good enough understanding so we're going to dunk you again yeah but i i think it, i'm glad you brought this up because i think uh our stories are similar but a little bit different in, in how they worked out mm-hmm. so i think that there are a lot of people who are baptized younger um, and then their understanding of the gospel deepens, which your understanding of the gospel is constantly going to be yeah. deepening and growing. Um, it doesn't mean that you weren't trusting Christ before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the, the ability then to understand more fully that conversion and tend to look back at that mm-hmm. baptism more meaningfully and rejoice in Christ, that's a yeah. really good thing. But I think for other people like me, uh, I was baptized very young. I think I was probably six or seven. And I did not understand the gospel. Mm. I was at a revival service at our church, and the guy preached about hell, and I got scared, and uh, I made a decision. I was baptized, uh, but there was no conversion. There was no change in heart. Uh, I was very much a little legalist uh, mm. in my, and I tried to do, you know, I had to read my Bible. I had to make sure the Bible was the the book on the top of all the other books because it was the most important mm-hmm. book, and I had to. You know, I had all these little rituals and rules that I kind of tried to live my life by, and I always lived in guilt, and I always mm. was, um, I, I just knew that something was not right, and so I was always trying to prove that I was a Christian, and I would lay in bed at night praying the sinner's prayer over and over and over again, questioning, was I sincere, was I sincere, was I sincere? To the point where, you know, when I was 16, uh, the Lord convicted me deeply. Mm. You're not saved, and... um and and he 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 gave me repentance that leads to life, and there was that life changing mm. conversion that happened. And so I came home and I said, I was not saved before, but now I am. Mm. So I want to be baptized again, because that first baptism was not baptism. I mean, I was immersed, right. but it was not an expression of faith because there was no faith there. Right. This is now faith, 
Hmm. So some uh, some of our listeners are probably have experience like you, that their understanding of the gospel grows and it affirms mm-hmm. the faith that was there. Where others' understanding of the gospel grows and they realize that there yeah. was no faith there. That's a good point. And so I need to be baptized mm-hmm. again. So, you know, listener, where are you at on that? Yeah. You know, maybe you've never been baptized. Uh, if you're trusting in Christ, you need to submit to baptism mm-hmm. in the name of the Lord. Uh, and then um, some of our listeners, you were baptized very young and yet you realize later that you were actually converted at a later date, but you've never been baptized again. I think you you need to be baptized again because baptism is the expression of faith. And so mm. if that first one was not faith and you know that, you need to be baptized. For others of you, that baptism you can look back at with joy mm. and, and thankfulness of heart that God saved you and drew you to himself uh, in that moment and, and rejoice in that and be glad. So Yeah. Yeah, that's good. My 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 story was, uh, you know, I was baptized younger, and then uh, in high school was just pretty rebellious, and then, you know, got the Lord convicted me of that and and uh, brought me to repentance for for several of those sins, and one of the major parts of that repentance was remember your baptism, like look mm-hmm. back, and uh, and so it was just yeah, it was a really really uh, looking back to my baptism was really instrumental in in repentance of of sin because it that's was awesome. like look remember who you are and. Yeah, uh, praise the Lord. This isn't the life that. So yeah. Anyway, um, so what 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 do you think hinders people from from being baptized? We, we've touched on it a little bit here and there, but let's address what 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 hinders people from being baptized. A lack of faith. Mm-hmm. Fundamentally, I think it's a lack of faith in Jesus, a lack of seeing Jesus as the treasure for whom I would I would lose my life to have mm-hmm. Jesus. Um, you know, when we baptize, I ask the person in the pool. Are you trusting in Jesus to save you from your sins? And they answer yes. And then I ask this question. I say, you know, following Jesus is becoming increasingly unpopular. Mm-hmm. And our, whole, our culture is becoming increasingly hostile to, to Christ and to his followers. Um, and Christians in other parts of the world are dying yeah. to remain loyal to Jesus. Right. Are you willing to follow Jesus even if it costs you your life? And to which they answer yes. And so I think... Um, to say that, you, you, you have to treasure Jesus more than you treasure your life. Mm. And to me, when someone doesn't want to get baptized for whatever reason, that's a red flag yeah. of what are you treasuring more mm. than Jesus? And if there is something there that, that, that concerns me as a red flag, that maybe there is not saving faith. Now, maybe there is, and it's just a saving faith that needs to be matured a little bit more mm. but um i would i would stop and check am i really trusting and treasuring jesus christ as the treasure of life or am i treasuring something else as more valuable and so i don't want to submit to that yeah i, I think another thing would be fear of man mm-hmm. a fear of looking foolish a fear of being in front of people a fear of um standing out as weird or um you know a fear of man is also an inhibitor but again, it goes back to, do you treasure the opinion of people mm-hmm. more than you treasure Jesus? At the end of the day, you're, you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as an expression of your trust in and treasuring of mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if you do not treasure him, you won't be baptized. And, and I think that we, we could talk about various things that kind of hinder that. Now, is there a possibility that there's a medical situation where someone can't physically be immersed? Absolutely. We had a situation yeah. like that in our church mm-hmm. where there was a, uh, a quadriplegic man uh, who trusted in Christ, but physically he could not be immersed in water. I don't even think he could take a shower mm. for fear of drowning because of his condition. And so um, we uh, did not baptize him and we didn't sprinkle him either. We just voted to him as, as a member of the church yeah. family. Again, these are exceptions to that the rule. That would be like the thief on the cross. Yeah. This is an exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because of a, a very clear, obvious right. circumstance, and just a fear of water, that you know, I've seen that, especially in children. Well, mm-hmm. then you're not ready to be baptized because this is, you, you, you have to treasure Jesus above all things. Mm-hmm. And a fear of water, a fear of man, it's not... It's, that's not a legitimate reason, mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, there's there's other parts, that we, you hinted at, you know, other parts of the world. There's other 
places like I think of the Middle East where in some places to be baptized in the Christian faith means losing ties with all your family. Your family is either, some of them will even try to kill you yep. for, for being like your own, they'll try to kill their own children for, for being baptized right. uh, with Christ. Um, and so it, it's just so hard for me to, to get my head around people uh, in those areas that, that are willing to be baptized, knowing it could literally mean the, the end of their life on yep. earth. Yep. Uh, and then here in the States, um, it's just kind of a different mindset. And, and I, I know it's growing more and more hostile, but um, there's just different hindrances that, that don't seem to, you know, they're just imbalanced, I, mm-hmm. I think. But yeah. It's got to, we, we need to reclaim the sacredness of the act. It is important. It is mm-hmm. significant. Yeah. It's not something trivial. It's not like losing your first tooth or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Which is why we don't have you know, diving boards, like, like some, have you seen that? Like there's a church that has no. a diving board for the baptistry. No, I, I, I think those things trivialize the holiness yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. It is a holy act, mm. um, a visible manifestation of your faith. And it is an occasion of great joy. Mm. I love it when yeah. in our church, when someone comes up out of the water, there's cheering and mm. clapping and joy because a, a new life has born. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was going to say earlier before I got into to the water gun. Uh, part of baptism is is also an expression of the gospel. Yeah. Like we talked about this in, in our Sunday school class a few weeks ago. We're, we're talking about how the church uh, evangelizes or or uh, preaches the gospel to the world, and part of the part of it is through our our communion day and, and baptism day, mm-hmm. uh, where communion is is. Uh, putting on display the sacrifice of, of, of Christ again, and, and we're, we're partaking in that. Uh, but then also baptism is is preaching the gospel that these people are dying to their sins, dying to their old ways and being raised up into new life. And they're now united with Christ and they're a new creation mm-hmm. and uh, new in Christ. And they have a new covering. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's one of my favorite. I think, I think baptism is, is probably uh, my favorite to watch. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't want to play favorites with communion and, and baptism yeah. as far as partaking in, but I love watching baptism because, yeah. like you said, the joy on the people's face as they come up out of the water, yeah. uh, and and even the joy in the room. There's always that one one person in the audience yeah. that's yeah, yeah, you know, it's so yeah. it's yeah, it's uh, it's, it's a really it's beautiful glorious. moment. Yeah. Uh, communion days are my favorite days. Mm. Uh, yeah. My favorite Sundays by by far. I mm. just I love that. And we don't do it every week, but I think that's also part of it. Like yeah. it, we can anticipate it, mm. you know. But anyway, yeah. I, I I think. You know, if I if I would end this podcast with with one thing, I would say, look at your heart. Mm. Have you been baptized? If not, why not? Are you trusting in Christ? If you are, you need to display that publicly through baptism. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good place to end it. Uh, but I did just think of a, of a uh, Nacho Libre quote: "You must be baptized." <laughs> remember that? No, no, I don't okay. remember that. Well, anyway, oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this this episode of uh, The Following. Uh, um, so yeah, I guess until next week, keep following Jesus and be baptized. Thanks again for tuning in to Following. We truly hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did enjoy this episode, we'd ask that you go and hit that, hit that follow button and share this podcast with your friends and your family. If you'd like to hear more on this text, visit the link in the description and you can watch or listen to this sermon on this text. For more resources, go to hopeformacon.com. Until next week, keep following Jesus.